So when I photographed this image, I had the camera set to daylight white balancing, and you can see how it's a little blue. Then I went inside, and for this shot, I photographed it right on the table there with these fluorescent lights. And you can see how it's a little orangier with a slight yellow greenish tinge, especially if you look at the wall back there, you can see some greenish tinge. <clears throat> and then I photographed it in front of our lights again, uh, and those are tungsten based. And again, the camera was still set to daylight balance, okay? It wasn't set to automatic white balance, but it was set to daylight. And you can see how orange it is. So <clears throat> it's hard for you to see this because your brain kind of corrects for this sort of stuff automatically. But you can see it if you really start to try. And, and, and after a little bit of experience, you, you'll start to be able to judge it a little bit. But what we can do is we can actually make some major changes here. So once you kind of set out your top 30 images, you're going to highlight them all. And then you're going to right click. And then right here, you're going to open in Camera Raw. See that? Okay. And then it's going to open up what we call the Camera Raw plugin. <clears throat> and the Camera Raw plugin gives us a whole series of adjustments that we can make on our images. But the first and most important one that I want to deal with right now is our color balance. Now, if you take a look, this thing is way orange. I mean, we know this is white. This is a white object, and that's not supposed to be that color. And if I go over here to the top, this is what we call a histogram. It's a very helpful piece of, of information that the Camera Raw gives you. And what it basically is, it's basically a bar graph of the tones in your image. The shadows are on the left and the highlights are on the right. What is this telling you right here when you see this? Hmm? Okay, so we got a lot of shadows. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah a lot of our pix pixels are in shadows. That's true. If we look at our highlights, so what is it telling us about our colors in the highlight? Hmm? No, there's a, look at this spike right here. See that? There are a lot of pixels here, maybe not as many, but there's a spike right at the highlight, and how many of them are a certain color? What's our major color here? Red, yeah. That's the first good indicator that the color balance is off, is when your highlight is primarily one color. Your highlight should be a neutral white. Okay, that, I mean, that's really what should happen. So if you're seeing this here, the first thing you should think is, whoa, if my highlights aren't a neutral white, then something might be wrong with this photograph. Now, let me just say histograms aren't perfect. Let's say you're photographing somebody who's in a bright red shirt. Well, obviously then you're gonna have a lot of red pixels. Okay, so you need to be mindful that it's not always neutral. But in this case, we've got a white object, and it's not white anymore, and we can see that here. Now here's what's really cool about Camera Raw. Now if you shot with a JPEG, you can't even open them in Camera Raw, you're stuck. But if you have Camera Raw files, you can go right here, there's a slider right here, to change your white balance. Because Camera Raw actually captures more colors at least theoretically, than most people can see. And certainly more colors than you need to print with. So what you can do is you can either adjust the slider, see that, if I go to the right it gets even more yellow. And look at the histogram changing, isn't that kind of cool? Okay. Or I can just choose some presets from here. Now if I just go to uh, as shot, you'll see that it says that I was shooting at 5150. If I then go to what I shot this under, and I know I shot this under tungsten, look what happens. Wow. That's a massive change, isn't it? And it's a much better photograph. A much better photograph. Now, if I take a look at my curve here, the histo or not the curve, the histogram, see, I still have a little bit of a spike of yellow. Now, depending upon what the subject is, that could be good or it might not be acceptable. If I slide this a little bit more to the left, right there is about as good as it's going to get. And it does get a little bit more neutral here. Okay? So its little, its tungsten preset in Camera Raw wasn't perfect. It was off by 100 degrees. Now some of you might wonder, well, why is that? 
If they know tungsten lights are 2,800 degrees or 3,000 degrees, then why would the preset be off? Well, there's two reasons. One, different manufacturers of bulbs have different materials that they use and different quality levels, and one light bulb is not the same as another. Number two, as light bulbs get older and the filament inside burns more, it actually changes the color of the light. So you can kind of, you can be close, but it's really hard to predict exactly what color it's going to be giving you. So it's important that you're able to adjust this. You can also adjust the tint left and right, <clears throat> add some magenta, add some green. However, I recommend you don't use that, at least not until a long way away, you know, after you've done everything else. You should be able to make your photograph pretty darn neutral with just the color balancing here. You shouldn't have to do much more than that. And you can see how I can make all three of them look rather similar. So we, here we got the tungsten balanced one. Now I'm going to go to the next one. This was shot with fluorescence. So let's go back here and let's choose fluorescent. It gives us a starting point. <coughs> Excuse me. It's still a little high in the reds and the yellows, though. I'm looking at the midtones here. Because I've got a neutral subject, I can kind of look at that. So let's slide. And notice it added a little tint to it. We'll keep the tint the same. Let's just slide this a little bit to the left and see if we can get to even more neutral. Oh, yeah. That looks a lot better. So just a touch to the left, 3,500. Lastly, let's take a look at our daylight photograph. So here we've got our daylight photograph. It's got two, two things wrong with it. One, I think it's a little underexposed. We can adjust that in a minute. But two, it's definitely rather blue. And you can see that again in your histogram here. You can see the blue right there is, is definitely uh, pretty high up. And I know that my highlight should be red. So I can just go and set this to daylight. And it helps a little bit. So if I go back to as shot, it says 5150 was as shot, but then I go to daylight here, it raises to 5500, that helps, but it's still a little blue. And this is the case because what was happening is it was, it was A, a little underexposed, which doesn't help, but B, it was like cloudy, overcast, early morning, so it's going to be even higher than daylight. So what I can do is just slide the temperature to the right and you can see the histogram changing and now at about 6600 we have a, um, a pretty neutral image. What did I say I thought it was when I shot this morning? My first guess was 7000. A little over but that's not too shabby. Okay. Now it looks a lot better and it doesn't look as underexposed does it either? Let's go back to the original as shot. Watch it change. See how it looks like it's a little even, it even looks a little underexposed. But if I go back to 6600, and you can type it in by the way, 6600, there we go. It looks a lot better, doesn't it? It even looks a little brighter because now I've got the correct color to it. Now you can also play with some of these other things that are down here. <clears throat> there are actually multiple pages in here of adjustments that you can do. I don't want you to go too crazy here at first. Um, first off, just because I want you to start feeling your way through stuff and not going too nuts. The exposure is a good thing, okay? But you can obviously overdo it really easily. The recovery is rather nice. It helps you get some of your highlights back. So notice my highlights getting a little darker, okay? And I can adjust between the two of them and kind of get a sense of what's going on. Fill light kind of raises your midtones a little bit. Okay, kind of makes things a little lighter in the middle. That's okay, but you know what? A lot of times it lowers contrast, so be very careful with that. Um, <clears throat> blacks will actually take your shadows and make them uh, darker. So if I zoom in here and you can see down here in the shadows, watch what happens as I add the blacks. See how the shadows are getting darker, 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 darker? Look at my histogram now. Almost all my tones are here. There's almost nothing in the middle now, but my highlights stay the same. So it stretches your, takes your midtones and it brings them closer to the black.
area. Too much of that is obviously a bad thing because you start to lose detail as well. You know, you're going to start losing detail in here. So if I were to adjust it at all, I might bring it right in about here. Kind of gives the photograph a little bit more contrast, makes it pop a little bit better, but it's not a massive change. Um, and I like adjusting with the blacks better here than increasing my contrast with this slider. I find that this is like using um, a fine tool, like a pair of needle nose pliers, and this is like using a sledgehammer. Okay, Because as you add contrast, it stretches things in both directions, and what ends up happening is a lot of times you lose your highlights and, and other stuff. I'd rather work with the exposure okay, and the recovery to get my highlights nice and then work with the black slider to get my shadows nice and then work with the fill light to adjust my midtones a little bit brighter if I need to. Probably won't. Okay. Lastly, you have these three here. Clarity will actually increase the sharpness a little bit. Look what happens. See? It's helping increase contrast just around areas where it finds an edge, where a line is. That's rather nice. It adds a little pop. Again, you can overdo it, especially with a background like I've got here. It's going to actually add detail, or not detail, but add contrast to that detailed background, and it's going to make it more complicated, and now it's going to compete with my subject, which I might not want. Um, <clears throat> then Vibrance kind of punches the colors a little bit. Okay, you can see them changing in the highlights there, touch, okay. I don't usually ever use that. And then saturation I also rarely use. Watch the colors, especially in the bricks. Ugh. Okay, it just super saturates those colors. And, and again, I, I generally don't do much with those. If I do, it's just a couple of points to kind of punch the, the colors a little bit or something like that. Now, one last thing. When you're done doing this, you literally just hit the done button. Don't open the images because that will open it into Photoshop. We'll get there later. Hit done. Now you go back in the bridge. Watch them go. Ching, ching, ching. Okay. Now, one last important lesson. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say, whoops, no, I don't want to do that. Right click on this one and I'm going to say show in Finder. It's going to pop up my window. One of the things that you're going to notice is going to be happening is as you start to edit, and this is already happening, Right now, when you are rotating your images and giving them star ratings, these little files, these XMP files, are going to start showing up. The bridge and camera raw will edit your photos in what we call non-destructive manner. In other words, it doesn't delete or change or alter the original image. It only saves the changes to a third file. So, if I take this, so here's 6939.CR2. This is my outdoor photograph. If I take this XMP file and I move it out of the folder or delete it, watch what happens. It went back to being yucky and blue. If I go back to the finder, okay, and I put that XMP file back, now it goes back to what I changed it to. So this is both very cool and slightly dangerous. It's very cool because your original image never gets touched, never gets destroyed, never gets altered. You can go totally crazy with all your corrections, and at very worst, we just find that XMP file, we delete it, and you start from scratch if you went too far. Okay, That's kind of nice. The bad news is you have to keep that XMP file with the image at all times. If you delete it, move it, or anything like that, then you, you lose all of your work. Okay, so it's a double-edged sword. It's good because you don't ruin your photograph. It's bad because if you don't know what it is or you remove it, now all of a sudden you're in trouble. Not horrible trouble. You just have to start over again. And, and you know, it's hard to do things the exact same way twice. Right? You know what I mean? So I just want you to understand that's what it's doing. And you'll notice, if you look here in the previews, you can see these little circles, I pointed them out before to you. That means that you have done an adjustment on that image. That means that that image now has an XMP file. So any of your photographs that have one of these now have an XMP file. Don't delete those XMP files. Don't move them. Just keep them the way they are. Don't rename them. If I rename it, then it doesn't understand that it's meant for that image. The XMP file and the, um, 
picture have to have the same name. So 6939.cr2, that's the image. The XMP file is 6939.xmp, okay? If I change that, okay, and I go back to the bridge, I lose all my corrections, you see? So don't mess around with those XMP files, okay? That's basically what I'm telling you. I'm just doing it more complicated, but I'm showing you what people have done. This is what people have done in my classes before. And then they don't understand why something's gone wrong or something's missing or, or whatever. Okay, so I'm just trying to keep you from making those same mistakes. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, I know that's a lot.